We've all heard about transgender, but we're not sure how or why it happens. You're gonna find out next. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Gary Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you, live streaming and broadcasting on a variety of FMs up and down the west coast of California. I want to introduce to you Dr. Babak Dadvand, and he is considered the premier surgeon for transgender surgery. Now, everyone hears the word transgender. It's on every television set, every radio station, in every newspaper, but a lot of people don't get, well, I don't get it. I don't get it. So how do we tell somebody from Mars about we the humans and how this thing works? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and it's it's true. It is it is uh, something that that sometimes needs to be explained. And I think in the next you know several years, it's going to become more and more understood. And and the basic thing is, look, on on the surface, there's two genders, male, female, but there's a whole spectrum in between, and that's what's really interesting and what's coming coming to the forefront. A lot of the patients who are coming to see me always knew, even at a very young age, that they just didn't feel right inside their body. That, right. that they, they felt that they were, you know, whether it was, you know, they were born a male, but always felt female or vice versa. And initially, when they're going through high school and through their teen years, they thought maybe it was a sexuality thing, but they come to realize that it's not. And gender identity doesn't have anything to do really with sexual identity. Um, and it's just what you... Inert- Slam the brakes. That's right. Are we saying that a straight man could wake up from birth and actually feel he's a woman? Yeah, and that's really the essence of it. It's what you innately feel your gender identification is, and it's it's not something that's learned. Yeah. It's not it's not nurture. It's nature. It's something that they have innately, and it's one of the most basic things that we as uh, as a human race have within us. We know our gender, and so you can imagine when you feel like you're in the wrong body, yeah. and how that can play on you emotionally, psychologically. And, and physically, when they start going through puberty. I'm going to jump in because I'm assuming you're heterosexual. Yes. I could tell because we had a big conversation about soccer earlier, and um, <laughs> there's certain groups of people that tend to be bigger fans than others. That said, uh, for a lot of people who think, well, it's a choice. It's just a choice. You just wake up on Thursday and go, I think tomorrow I'm going to go out with Bruce. And we know if you're straight, or if you're gay, let's say you're straight, whoever you are, whoever you are, right. as Dr. Dodd you wake up, you don't make a choice, I'm gonna like girls, I'm gonna like them today, I swear to God, I'm gonna like you just don't think about it. Because it's the natural pointing of the compass, the orientation, it is the hardwiring of the human being. Right. And you know when you have a private moment alone with no witnesses, especially in your teen years, or when you're online watching a channel that maybe you don't want your grandmother to know you're on, you know what you're watching for real, and you know it turns you on. And that's kind of the truth of it, isn't it? Right. And so when you talk about choice, why would somebody choose to go down a a life that's going to be potentially fraught with discrimination, whether it's uh, emotional discrimination, personal life? employment, governmental, why would someone choose that? It just doesn't make sense. I mean, for me, that whole choice argument is is just is ridiculous, really, because why would someone choose a harder life for themselves? I mean, there's no real explanation for that. So it can't be a choice, right? Every, everyone who says that it's a choice is basing it on some other kind of dogmatic, religious, 
uh, ideology that yeah. that is just not is not able to be seen through as a as an actual coherent argument. Harrison, with you, we are talking to Dr. Dodvond. He is the premier surgeon, plastic surgeon, double board certified. He is the go-to guy here in uh, well, Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California, second largest market uh, in the United States, and. People go to him because when they want the sexual gender reassignment, the transgender surgery, and they want it to look not only good, but work, but function to the best that nature will allow after the surgery, they go to you for that. Now, now that's tricky business, I would think. Well, let me clarify. When I do transgender surgery, yeah. I focus on above the waist, yeah. okay, so facial um, chest, um, even body stuff. Below the waist, yeah, that's more in the field of urology, you know, and there's a lot of plumbing work that I, I don't uh, dabble in, so to speak. So I think for me, it's, you know, it's it's trying to, you know, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, F to M, female to male, comes to me for, for chest masculinization. Right. This is not breast reduction surgery, okay? You're not reducing the breasts. The difference between a man and a woman's chest is not just the size. There are a lot of things that makes a man's chest more masculine. I've always thought so. Yeah, and these things have to be understood by the surgeon. It's not a matter of just taking them off and just closing the incisions right. because you can see a lot of bad examples out there. I see them in my office when they're coming in for revision work. It needs to be done very thoughtfully, artistically, with a sense and knowledge of the anatomy that makes it different because this is something that you're changing the trajectory of these patients' lives, you know, getting them to finally look on the outside how they've always felt on the inside. We have a clip that we're going to take a look at right now. This is a patient named Nick from my hometown of Chicago once upon a time. Um, have never met Nick. He's now 28 years old. He went in to see Dr. Uh, Dodvond and went in and tells his story very quickly in a minute and what he went through. My name is Nick and I'm 27 years old. I'm here at Dr. Dodvond's office today uh, because I'm getting a uh, breast removal surgery. Um, it's basically a transitioning step for me. Um, it took me a lot of time and research to find a doctor that would be suited for me. Um, I felt comfortable with Dr. Davin because he explained the procedure, he's had experience with this before, uh, he made me feel comfortable and like it's something that I can actually get through. I'm most excited about when the surgery is complete, uh, being able to walk around in public in a t-shirt, not having to wear all this hot, itchy, uncomfortable things underneath my clothes, not having to feel like I need to hide myself, uh, just basically feeling free. So we just finished with uh, Nick's surgery and everything went great. Uh, the first day of the rest of his life, and I'm glad to have played a small part in it. Harrison with you. This is, of course, Harrison on the Edge. We are talking right now to Dr. Babak Dodvand. He is considered the premier plastic surgeon, double board certified here in Los Angeles, the go-to guy for anybody who wants transgender surgery. And uh, we just saw a, a really a profound piece of video there where and this is the best part, when we see with our own eyes before and after. Right. So it's not just anecdotal. like. This person is now forever changed. Yes, and you know, Nick is um, someone who, when I first met him in my office in the initial consultation, even before deciding to to, to do a docu uh, documentary on him, yeah. he was so shy, reserved, in his shell. You can tell he was in, uncomfortable in his own skin. Was wearing a chest binder that was so tight it was affecting his breathing, um, and all of this just to basically to hide what he felt should be there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so I just saw him actually for his one year follow up. He's a totally different man, you know, full of confidence. He's, uh, you know, proud of his chest. He has no inhibitions now as far as his physical appearance. He's so grateful. And like I said, to change the trajectory of someone's life. Yeah. I mean, transgenders have a 10 times higher suicide rate, you know, than the average population. And to really make an impact, I mean, that's why I went into plastic surgery. You know, it's 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 that kind of impact in, in someone's life. It's it's the most satisfying feeling that, that, that anyone can feel. And now Nick, uh, who was once a woman, and right. is now uh, corporeally 
and believably a man, this makes him now able to date. That's a big deal, because at the end of the day, that's all we mammals want. Right. Is we mammals, we couple. Right. And that's everything. Seagulls, giraffes. So this is good. You have to be comfortable with yourself and yeah. love yourself before you're able to be comfortable with someone else and right. love someone else. So let's talk for a second about what the surgery, just very briefly, so that we understand you have breast tissue. It in a way is like a mastectomy that women might go through if they have cancer or resection where it goes away but you don't make it flat like a woman's breasts might be after they're removed you actually put probably some sort of something in there so believe it or not there are no implants or anything really? used in these for female to male top surgery there are two real different options um, yeah. and it has to do with the size of your breast and how much extra skin uh, guys who come in with small breasts, A cups, maybe small B, with good skin tone, yeah. you can actually do all the work through a little tiny incision underneath the areola, no bigger than a couple of inches, and just get out all, all that extra breast tissue. But yeah. the key is, it's not like a mastectomy in the traditional sense, because if you ever see a woman who's had a mastectomy for cancer, yeah. their chest actually, actually doesn't look masculine. It's sunken in. Yes. And so you have to be able to, to not just take out everything. Anybody can do that. The finesse is about what what to leave and where to leave it behind. Uh -huh. And so the patients who come in with bigger breasts, C cups, D cups, um, and low nipple positions or large areolas, they need what's called a double incision uh, surgery, which means that the nipple and areola are taken off at the beginning but of the let's surgery. Let's just say what an areola is. Yeah. So we know, yeah. but maybe you don't. It is the brown spot around the nipple and some women have a very large areola maybe the size of a chocolate chip cookie right and that has to be shrunken down to look like a man's areola right so the average areola in a woman is about four to five centimeters a two to three inches or so in a man it's two and a half to three centimeters mm. so an inch so that's one thing so you have to re resize that and then do do the surgery where you're taking off most of the tissue, but taking off more in certain areas to create the definition of the pec muscle, um, making sure that the incisions are symmetric and are curving in the right way so it, it's as camouflaged as possible. And then putting the nipples back on as a free graft, but not where a woman's nipples would be, which would be in the center of the chest, but a little bit more to the outside. And if any guy out there who's watching and listening, just feel where your nipples are, you'll see that they're not in the middle of your chest. They're a little bit more to the outside yes. and a little yes. bit lower than, than where a woman's nipples are. And probably not lactating. And shouldn't be lactating. Yes. If it is, you should see your doctor, <laughs> for sure, immediately. <laughs> This is extraordinary. So you do waist up. Yes. Um, the people more involved in the uh, urological plumbing department, and boy, there's a lot of valves and vas deferens between this and that. And nerves. And nerves and all of that stuff. But uh, so do you do face as well? Yes. So again, depends if it's you know female to male, so masculinization yeah. versus feminization. So the male to female, th there are certain things about a man's face that doesn't look right when you're trying you know to, to feminize so for mm -hmm. one anything from the forehead you know men tend to have a more prominent forehead bone more masculine nose might be a little bit wider or less mm -hmm. defined um, everything to the Adam's apple which is actually a piece of cartilage that sticks out more in a man and can be pretty obvious um, that can be shaved down through a very small incision uh, these things help a lot in in say feminizing a face for male to female um, and then for you know the interesting thing is for for female to males the testosterone that they're on helps a lot in masculinizing mm, their face of course so it deepens the voice, facial hair, those sorts of things are a little bit of a um, out for them as far as needing masculinization surgery for the face. It's more so for the male to females. Well, I'm so glad we had this discussion. Um, it's such a sort of a general myth for people who are not who haven't met a transgender person, we see them all the time. Yes. This is the other part, is we see transgender people all the time. We may not know because of your work. Right, right. I won't tell. That's right. And, and that's the better part, too. That's right. There's a, you know, the doctor-patient confidentiality. Absolutely. And in here, we had Nick prefer 
to be helpful to others. A documentary was made, and the idea was to help educate people and show how it works. So I appreciate that side of it, too. I appreciate you coming on. How do we follow you and your good work? Uh, well, first of all, it's a pleasure being on. Um, my website is www.doctor, which is DR, and yeah. then Dodvand, plastic surgery, dot com. Um, and my office number is 310 278 4200. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. So a lot of different ways nowadays to, to find me. All right, my friend. I very much appreciate it. And thank you for doing your good work. Uh, thank you very much. Take Harrison care. with you. We will see you again shortly. Shakers, agitators, and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Gary Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you, live streaming and broadcasting on a variety of FMs up and down the west coast of California. I want to introduce to you Dr. Babak Dadvand, and he is considered the premier surgeon for transgender surgery. Now, everyone hears the word transgender. It's on every television set, every radio station, in every newspaper, but a lot of people don't get, well, I don't get it. I don't get it. So how do we tell somebody from Mars about we the humans and how this thing works? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and it's it's true. It is it is uh, something that that sometimes needs to be explained. And I think in the next you know several years, it's going to become more and more understood. And and the basic thing is, look, on on the surface, there's two genders, male, female, but there's a whole spectrum in between, and that's what's really interesting and what's coming coming to the forefront. A lot of the patients who are coming to see me always knew, even at a very young age, that they just didn't feel right. We've all heard about transgender, but we're not sure how or why it happens. You're gonna find out next. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre. Inside their body. They, right. they, they felt that they were, you know, whether it was, you know, they were born a male, but always felt female or vice versa. And initially when they're going through high school and through their teen years they thought maybe it was a sexuality thing but they come to realize that it's not and gender identity doesn't have anything to do really with sexual identity um, and it's just what you inert slam the brakes that's right are we saying that a straight man 